Hey there, this is Margaret Gill and welcome back to the top 10 speaking tips. And today's tip is number two and it's all about speaking to an audience that wants to know about your topic. And that is knowing who your target market is and what you do for them. And it's also more simply known in my system as your who and your what. Who do you work with and what problem do you solve for them? And back in the early days, it was easy for me because I used to work with health and wellbeing practitioners. And the problem I solved was helping them get their business going and get them out speaking, get them out getting and finding new clients, those sorts of things. Uh, and then I went a little bit deeper into it, helping them to be able to create their own products and create their own systems and things like that. So as time went on, I grew. But initially, it was very basic stuff that I was teaching. And this is what we have to remember is the speaking thing is a journey. And it's all about the journey. It's about mastering your journey. And speaking will be the thing that rockets you to the, literally to the front of the room, but to the front of the crowd the fastest. Because if you think about it, how many people do you know that are in your industry that are actually speaking? Of all of the people that you went to uni with or you went to tech with or wherever you learned what you needed to do to uh, learn what you know, how many of them are speaking? Probably not a huge percentage because it's so scary. And the reason that I tell you the two golden rules only speak on topics you know a lot about and only speak to people that want to hear what you've got to offer. And that's that's key in the early days. Later on, you can do whatever you like, but for the first year, just focus on those two things. Just focus on building up a really good talk. So the first talk you do will not be that great. I'll tell you that right now. It never is. The last talk you do in that year, will be exceptional because you will have had time to master it. You will have had time to master what you need to do. You will have made a few mistakes and you will have been able to measure. Master mistakes and measure the three M's. <laughs> there you go. I'm on fire today with the, with the little, uh, the little uh, what are they called? I can't think. Little frameworks, the little frameworks. So yeah, you'll go out and you will learn and all speakers, are learners they like to learn stuff they like to be better even the very best speakers on the planet are always eager to learn more so as you go on it's really important that you get a very clear idea of who you work with and what you do for them and i'll give you a clue get with people that you really like <laughs> really really could spend a lot of time with so i was with health and wellbeing practitioners they're awesome people they're lovely awesome gorgeous people and so it was easy to spend time with them because you are going to spend a lot of time with them and you've got to like them you've got to like that people that are going to turn up at your events because they're going to everybody's going to sort of ask you questions and they're going to be talking to you afterwards and where you thought you were going home half an hour after you talked, perhaps you might be going home an hour and a half after you talk, and you're going to be spending a lot of time with people after the event. And as one of my mentors says, you've got to want to be able to sit in the bar with them and have a few drinks afterwards. Not that I drank, but you know, you get the picture. You're going to be spending a lot of time with your who, and you've got to want to like them. So don't go into a who because it's lucrative. And because those people have a lot of money and you think you can influence them if you don't really, really like those people. It's very important that you like them. So it's as you build and as you start to get your speaking gigs under your belt, you'll learn a lot and you'll be able to tweak and test as you go along, finding out what that audience likes the best from you. So if you do your first talk and Maybe you think you could have done better. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. You will always want to do better. But look back. Always have evaluation forms as well because you'll think that you don't do so well. But the audience might tell you quite differently. Or you might be surprised what they take from the talk 
with in the evaluation forms the one thing that you sort of dropped in there that just came to you on the night and you just went oh and there's this topic as well there's this point as well that's probably going to be the one they wanted to hear and the one that had the most impact on them yeah, it's frustrating as all get out you spend weeks getting something together and they like the one thing that came off the top of your head on the night but that's what happens that's what tends to happen so there's a golden rule for you never talk on topics that you don't know stuff about and in the early days you will get people that want you to talk because they just want to fill up the box somebody might have cancelled and they phone you up and go look I want you to do a talk on this and you go, mm, yeah, but I don't know a lot about it. Oh, don't worry. Look how people are lovely. They're gorgeous, awesome people. And uh, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, uh, okay, I'll do it. And you get there and you find out that there are a bunch of intellectuals who know your topic backwards. You're just starting out and you perhaps only know one part of the topic. But you know what? You get the picture. It all starts to fall together on the night. So you have to be in charge of the room. When you speak you have to have gotten a lot of information from the people booking you and you have to discern very quickly whether or not you think you're going to be able to serve that room well because speaking is service and once you get your head around that and you get around the service not nervous aspect of things that's when things get really really easy you will always be nervous when you speak it's part it, it, part of the of the physicality of speaking is that your body is pumping you up to be able to do something. So your adrenals are pumping adrenaline into your body because there's a fight or flight thing going on in your brain. It's like, oh, this is really scary. And so your adrenals react to it and start pumping adrenaline because they're sensing fear. So adrenaline's starting to pump. And that's why you'll often be a little bit shaky before you speak. Uh, because yeah, you've got adrenaline pumping through your body uh, it's a good thing because as soon as you get up on stage you're going to need that adrenaline because you know you can't go on stage like if I was sitting here talking like this and you know I was all slouched down and you know really like this it gets really boring really fast doesn't it but if you're up and you're active and you're obviously enjoying what you do and you're pumped up and you're good to go it makes a big difference huh so that is what we want you to be able to get your head around is you're always going to be nervous until you've done thousands of talks and then it might get a little bit easier. But if you talk to some of the big artists, they always do their warm-ups at the start. They always pace the halls. They do all sorts of things uh, to deal with the adrenaline stuff that goes on. And I've heard it said by people like Bono and things like that, that they still get nervous they still there's an edge to them before they go on stage and back in my musician days I, I worked with some artists who were really old hands and one of them he always got really really nervous you could it was like this big cone of silence came down on him about half an hour before the show you didn't talk to him you just let him sit in the corner and he got really really nervous and he was one of the most gifted people I have ever worked with the crowd loved him before he went on even before he went on the crowd loved him and so everybody gets nervous it's part of the game and it's part of how this how being a good speaker when you learn to manage that adrenaline uh, it'll make you a better speaker so we, we want that we want that nervousness before we start it's a sign that we care that we've gotten ourselves in, in, in enough of a state it shows we care and if you have an audience that's on your side, they will understand because you can bet that 90% of that audience do not want to be where you are standing. They, they, they're quite happy out there with the tribe. They're quite happy in the, in the clump. Uh, and the reason why speaking is so nervous is that you have to break from the clump. You have to break from the tribe and get yourself on the front of the stage. So you're actually turning around and facing the tribe. You're the only one there. It's not natural for a human to be the only one. We feel safest when there's others around us. And those people are going to admire you for actually breaking from the crowd and getting up there and doing something that they can't do. And you might think, oh, I don't, will they do that, Margaret? Yeah, they will. 
quite often a lot of the comment that I've got is, oh, I could never do what you do. Thank you for coming along. I could never do what you do. And my response is, actually, you could. You just have to learn how to do it. it there's, a, there's a set routine to speaking. And yes, you can break the routine as you get more confident. But in the early days, there's a set little routine that I speak that will get you through your first few talks. And I still do the routine now. Why break it? I found out what works. And uh, for me, what works is speaking from a very emotional place, from a very connected place, and from a place of love, basically. And I love teaching that. So if you are interested in learning, I have my Courageous Speaking uh, course and also my Inspiring Speaking course, which you can do at home where you don't have to come along and talk. At Courageous Speaking, you actually speak. Uh, and if you've enjoyed today's little topic, do leave me a message below uh, in the comments and I'd love to hear from you. And go out there and be remarkable. Bye. <laughs>